Yeah, okay, it's T with Gary V. Sipping in for three. I know patience is the key. Putting out all of my shit for free. This is T with Gary V. Might go make a flip. Take a re- Good morning, T fans. It is me, Gary V. Uh, early morning, 9 a.m. Eastern time on this May 15th, halfway through this month. We're just kind of all going through this. I hope everybody's super well. Uh, I missed you guys. Leave a comment if you missed T with Gary V yesterday. Let me know because it's nice to be missed because I missed you guys heavy. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hello, hello. Let's give some shout outs. Tatiana Spencer, good to see you here. Casey Smith, thank you. Julio Garcia, great to see you. Max Hendricks, good morning. Big shout out to everybody who just came over from text on community. If you're not following me on text, 212-931-5731, 212-931-5731. Text me, lock me in when the contact card comes out, fill out the info, get with me on it. A lot of fun there. If you just came over from text, because I just blasted all of you, said come and join me for some tea, leave a comment saying text. Just reply text on whatever platform you're using, YouTube, Facebook. Twitter, Twitch, it's good to have all of you here. So, um, yeah, there we go, see some people, love it. Yes, wine text, we will get to that right hook at some point here today. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's get into it. Dustin, how are you? Dust, before we get into it. Good. Your hair's um, looking good. <laughs> yeah, I took a shower last night and went straight to bed, and this is what happens. I appreciate that. <laughs> I, just uh, ran, I just ran up a huge hill eight times, cardio for life. Jesus, I don't know. I can't do that in the morning. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how I did it either. All right. Um, oh, yeah, this is the camera setup that me and D-Rock were telling you about. So I don't know if you can tell any difference on your yeah. end. Yeah, it looks good. Cool. So, yeah, I'll... Wait a maybe, minute, my the, camera's better? No, this camera. <laughs> my, my camera cam- looks my camera. too because there's oh, good then, light today. Yeah, probably. That's your why. Camera? This is the camera you're going to send to me? Yeah. I can't really tell the difference. Okay. Your end. Well, maybe. I but hopefully that. mine is better. But it's lighting too. It's all that shit. Yeah. All right, let's get into it. Gary, <laughs> what's up, man? Abel, it is so good to see you, bro. Good to see you too, man. Wow, it's, it's been, been a long time. Day. Wow. Literally, I moved in seventh grade, and then I saw you at the Hillsboro Fire Station baseball card comic show. Yep. Sophomore year or junior year of high school. So that's ninety two or ninety three. That's, and then that's when it. I came back. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Oh, right. Cause you, that's right. You told I literally that triggered. You also moved, yeah. right? Yeah. I moved to uh, Florida with my family. In, at Beach. the end of seventh grade too? Yep. Right at the end of seventh grade going so into we bo- So we both bounced John Adams middle school. Got, got out of John Adams right at the same time. <laughs> and then you came back and graduated JP Stevens? No, no, no. I just came back to see family and then went to see you. So yeah, that was cool, man. You sold me my first baseball card, Gary Carter. Uh, way back in the day. <laughs> you know what's funny? Every time I stumble on anybody that I grew up with, literally yeah. the first thing they say is, you sold me my sold first. Me a baseball card, yeah. Yeah, well, it's true, man. It's true. <laughs> I hustled those hard back then. Yeah, you did, man. You did. You hustled everything hard. Everything hard, man. You know, you know what you know, people you know read about you, that stuff's true. That's. Uh, I remember when you were a, a kid taking flowers and uh, selling them to the people. Now, let me ask you a question. Did you sell them to the same garden, to the same people, this garden you took it out of, or was it like neighbors? Neighbors, but sometimes yeah, the same okay, garden. Still, man, that's, that's crazy. That's crazy, yeah. It's so All good right. to see you, bro. Good to see you too, man. Good to see you too. I honestly, I don't even really have a question. I just yeah, I just wanted to see you too. You, yeah. <laughs> this is, what my favorite part of this, of us connecting is how Re- WrestleMania six or five, five, we yeah. watched WrestleMania when Macho Man lost to Hogan, Yep. That was at your house. And you I'm were devastated. Devastated. <laughs> devastated. That was right yeah. around the time that I knew that it was scripted, so I knew what was going to play out, yeah. but I was still devastated. Oh, I know. Yeah. That, that, that was back when wrestling was good, man. Uh, you oh, know, yes. it was, uh, yeah, it was awesome. And I remember that was the first time my mom met you when you came over to my house. And literally, uh, for like two minutes, she talked to you. She went out to find me, and she's like, why can't you be more like your friend Gary? <laughs> and I'm, I don't even know the guy. He could be a horrible guy. And she's like, well, is he? And I'm like, that's not the damn point. You know what I mean? But that uh, was funny, man. It was good times. I think some of the oh. best friends you have are the ones when you're kids because it's before all the bullshit. You know what I mean? You know, it's, it's crazy. It's- when I think back, we really, really got close in at John Adams. Like that's yeah. when our friendship got much stronger in, yeah. in sixth and seventh grade. Like, yeah. were you there when I fought Oded Weinstock at Marco's Hill? 
Oded Weinstock. Yes, I was. You whooped that, his ass. That he was a was big one. Yeah. That was a big one for me. That's my highlight yeah. of middle school. Oh, that was funny. Hey, man, do you remember uh, Rajan Courtney? Remember that? R Rajan was my guy. Yeah. Like in yeah. Th in fourth grade, he was like the only other kid that I was that like was good at like great at dodgeball. Yeah. Rajan Rajan was my guy, guy. I know that was awesome. But I remember like me and Rajan Rajan we were, we were kind of close, but not really. But before we were close. Uh, it was after school one day, and oh he wanted to fight God. me. Yeah, and you know, this. you and him and Danny Vega, those were like the toughest kids in school. You know? <laughs> so I remember it was after school, and, you know, the big circle formed, and I'm looking, honestly, I'm looking for you. I'm like, help, you know, but Get I'm in. not going to back down. Uh, I'm of course fresh. not. We were, this was Jersey in the 80s. Nobody fucking backed down. There was fights. Nobody backed down. Remember, no. the, remember the Williams twins who were younger but tougher than fucking everyone? Oh my God. Yeah, those were the big kids, right? Yes, Robbie yeah. and uh, I'm trying to remember the other kids' names. I, I don't remember the other one either. No, but this is funny because I remember the, the big circle formed and then here you come out of nowhere. You know, I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to get my ass whooped because I'm going to fight, but I don't want to fight, you know? So here you come. Rajan was tough. And I, yeah, and I remember you said, what's going on here? And Rajan's like, I'm going to whoop his ass. And you said, why? And he said, because I don't like him. And literally, I remember this happening. You looked right at him and you went, why? And he looked at you like a cow with <laughs> a fence. Yeah, and he was like, well, all right. So he didn't whoop my ass. So I never got to thank you for that. But thanks, man. That was awesome. Do you remember playing, do you remember playing our version of like soccer and hockey on the sidewalk with the- With, with the, the fucking rock? Yeah, well, with the rock too. But with after the containers. With the yeah, containers. With the, of a smashed Coke. And like, we used to- they, yeah, yeah. You ready for this? This is a true story. I was so addicted to that soccer hockey game with the rock and the can after yeah. school that I would get home so late that because I used to walk home that my mom would get nervous because I would get home so late. So finally, <laughs> one this is a true story. One yeah. time my mom goes, you have to be home after school today. Like yeah. do not fuck around, no fucking hockey. So my mom, she's shaking her head in the background. Right she goes, <laughs> I, I go, okay, mom, I promise. Sure enough, fucking after school, like I'm trying to leave, but the game's yeah. so good. I have to yeah. jump in. Everything's gonna be just one minute, but 30 minutes later, game ends. Now I'm petrified because my mom is ru fucking old school Russian. She's gonna whip my ass. This is not oh, yeah. some American like, no, 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 no. like you're. So I start running. And when I tell you running, running home, like full speed, <laughs> there's a short, so it's on a street and there's a shortcut. Do you remember Eric Godfrey? He was a year older than us. Do you know that name? You might no, not know him, but he was in my neighborhood. Yeah. His, I could cut, so you could, you could run home and go to the street, but there was a shortcut that would get me faster. So I'm running home and I'm watching every car that's driving to John Adams, hoping my mom's car is not there because I knew yeah. she would come. Sure <laughs> enough, just as I'm running down the hill and I look back to see the final cars that I could see before I can't see any more cars, I see my mom's Mercury Topaz fucking driving <laughs> and my fucking, like, it was over. Like, I knew it yeah, was over. Like and she, your eyes. Yeah. I will never forget that. We literally loved that game. So it was literally soccer slash hockey on pavement with yep. a rock or a crushed soda can. Yeah, yeah, that was, was crazy. Abel, I remember that super well. I know, that was awesome, man. That was awesome. So I got a new baby. Congratulations. Thank you, man. For 43 you, years old. She's going to have to wheel me to her graduation. But, nah, you know, man. You'll be the good. best 61-year-old ever. <laughs> Thank Abel, you. it's so good to see you, brother. I love you. It's been so you good too, to reconnect. Man. Talk to you All soon. Right, take care. Good stuff. It's fun to have those. You know what's fun is like, some of those stories are fun because you forget some of the stuff. That was Sean Courtney's story. I completely remember now. And it was like, so, I mean, that's 1984 shit. Um, I always believed in kindness, even back then. So, anyway, let's keep it going. Hi, Sarah. Hey, Gary. How are things? <laughs> things are really good on the West Coast. It's, it's early. Thanks for getting up early. Uh, yeah, whatever it takes, of course. Um, so, four years in the making since I tweeted you, and you tweeted back. So for everybody who's watching right now, yesterday I think you hit, tweeted, right? Yeah, I just responded to the tweet. Original tweet. Four years ago, Sarah said something. I said, well, we should talk then. And, and literally yesterday, she retweeted it and wrote over. It's like, can we book this? And I saw it. I'm like, yep, let's book it. And here we are. What's so funny, Gary, is then your team messages me and says, just get ready with a question. And I thought, this is what's so funny, is that I've obviously known about that tweet for four years. And every <laughs> time I've thought about messaging you in the past, 
it was because I wanted something. And I, then I would do this thing where I'd be like, well, what, what's he gonna tell me? He's gonna tell me, start the YouTube channel. He's gonna tell me, so, do, do, do. so just do the thing. And then yesterday we were supposed to have our 10 year celebration at the organization at WIT. And I was sitting in my house, not feeling sorry for myself, but just like thinking like, damn, I was supposed to be at that party. And I'm here and like, look what we've done during the pandemic for our kids. And, and I was like, you know, and I was, we haven't been a victim during this time. We've been so resourceful. We've been like, just, just doing such a great job and like just on it. And I thought, I just gotta tell him, thank you. So that's why I did it. So then when they messaged me, they're like, uh, they have a question. I was like, this is like, the, I mean, I, I thought of them, obviously I've had time to think of it, but I was like, wait, that's not even why I did it this time. So you know what's so powerful about that? Like the other times you've thought about it, it was from a place of need. Yes. Yesterday was from a place of giving and literally the universe decided to serendipitously allow me to see it and and then it creates the moment. And I and I really mean this, like that shit fucking freaks me out. Like when I hear that story, like it really makes me believe. Like like it just there's just something so obvious. No different, I'm sure you're just watching with Abel, right? Like yeah. like Abel still feels the impact of a third grade fight that I stopped out of kindness. Like like good brings on more good and bad brings on more bad and I believe in that shit and I and I feel a huge sense of responsibility as a good communicator that people are uh, are associated with and attracted to and drawn to to put out as much good as possible and when I hear that story from you just now it fucking reinforces what I believe I mean it's 8 minutes later and then the, then the funny thing was the tweets rolling in like oh she's been like holding that like she's I'm like it's no it's not like that <laughs> By the way, it happens all the time. I mean, there's people, I feel horrible because sometimes I see it, but I'm not in that mindset. Like, you know, attempt number 494 to get Gary V to follow me or say hi. Like, you know, it's it's hard. I'm out here operating and navigating and trying my best. And, you know, you know, 5,000 texts a day, 10,000 DMs a day, yeah. thousands of t- tweets. Like, it's, it's, you'll never beat the math, but my intent is there. And, and like, you, you, you make lemonade out of these lemons. Like, this, this mm-hmm. whole, pandemic has let me connect with the community at a, at a level. Tea with Gary Vee is a connection point that is greater than Ask Gary Vee, is greater than, is greater than anything I've done, I think, really, honestly. It's, it's got a different level of depth and calmness and, and, and speed that I think has really connected and helped both me and everybody who's watching it. Well, it's, I, I'm grateful. And I was thinking last night about how I started this nonprofit in 2008. I had been laid off. And when this whole thing hit uh, 75 days ago, that's, you know, because we're keep, we, I remember when we, when I was in New York and I flew back to California, uh, I just, and you were talking about this in one of your shows recently. It's like, I didn't get nervous. It's like, I've done, I, 2008, like I built this into there. having like no, I no noise. And my brother, an entrepreneur in his own right in real estate, he introduced me to you 10 years ago. And sometimes we'll be hanging out and I'll be like, wah, wah, wah. And he's like, don't be a victim. Don't be a victim. <laughs> I'm like, fair. Right. Right. <laughs> but that's the love that the, you the, the big The big thing for everybody who likes to complain and dwell and be a victim, they need to realize that nobody cares because they're worried about their own problems. Yeah. And the only people that are caring and, and coddling you are the people that extremely love you and enable it. Mm-hmm. or other people that are fucking losing. Like complaining and dwelling is a bad formula because it creates two bad relationships. It creates a relationship with another losing player and you're just negative on negative and you're just literally hanging out in your fucking sorrow bubble. Mm-hmm. Or it's putting somebody that loves you so much in a precarious spot where they're enabling you which eventually leads to resentment by both parties. Uh, yeah. Complaining and dwelling is bad. It really hurts relationships. And people that love you don't want you to sit in that. And it's interesting because I don't know if you know or what I do, but I mean, I help teens become entrepreneurs. We start the teens tweeting. Mm-hmm. And uh, you'll be happy to know that our teens run our social media because there is no excuse for not having it. But I personally do not feel like TikTok is like my jam. It no, is so your jam. Well, I mean, I'm saying like the kids... They, they intuitively know it, they, but, you're, it could be, but in four hours, it could be your jam. Yes, and they'll teach me. The fun thing is to be in situations where I can go to our t- our kids, our teens, our tweens, 
but let me let me take this moment up, Sarah. Let me take this moment because I'm gonna help a lot of people. Let me tell you how you get taught on TikTok, Snapchat, LinkedIn, or the next three things that happen in the next decade. You go immediately and you consume content on the platform for 10 hours. Okay. And and then you make 10 pieces of content. 10 hours, 10 pieces of content is how you learn every platform. Go in, download it, read, read, read. Don't judge them, don't say it's stupid. 10 hours of consuming. 10 pieces of content, giving it your best, okay. and then reassess. 10 hours, 10 pieces of content is how every single person can learn a new social network. Well, you should check it out because they were shouting you out yesterday. I will check it out. <laughs> it is such a pleasure. I'm glad we did this. Yeah, thanks, sir. And everybody, um, I want to thank you, Gary. You gave a tip in a video recently about just reaching out to people in the DMs on Instagram, and we're doing a virtual entrepreneurship summer camp and I've reached out to celebrity entrepreneurs in every space, and we've had some great yeses uh, that would probably not be chilling at their house right now. Can't get a yes if you don't ask. Yeah, so thank you, awesome. Gary. Take care, bye-bye. Um, Dustin, what are the updated numbers? I wanna start creating a competition. I wanna get Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch to start sharing their URLs to their community to get to the highest number. We have to do like a pizza party for the best class. <laughs> pizza party would be cool. So where uh, are we at? YouTube is 3,000. Mm -hmm. Facebook is 2,800. Yep. It's close. Uh, Twitch looks like it's 330. Yep. And Twitter looks about 330 or 20-ish also. Twitter and Twitch have some work to do. Love it. Yeah. Okay, let's keep it going. Hi, Katie. Wow, Hello, what a how are you? I'm very well, but your beautiful setting is inspiring. It's the best place to be. Good for you. It's really nice to see you. You too. I'm so excited. Thank I've been you. playing What Would Gary Say all week. Um, so all of my questions, I've filtered through what your response would be, and I've made a bunch of changes this week. Um, but my and question did, is... And, and did, did you feel any impact of any of those changes yet? I mean, it's early. You have. Yeah. Give me, give me um, one example. So we have a farm market, and we do home delivery. Uh, throughout the capital region, upstate New York. Um, oh, nice. And obviously all food delivery has skyrocketed in the last yes. few weeks. Yes. And, um, you know, it was just growing so exponentially that, you know, we just took, you know, it was scattered. So we were yes, just doing of course. whatever. Of course. When, it, when chaos hits, I mean, it's happening at, at Wine Text right now, Katie. Like, yeah. we hired nine the, the Springfield, New Jersey pool shut down for the summer, so we hired all nine lifeguards. Like, and like, inevitably, some of those kids are gonna ship the wrong bottle of wine. It, you know, like, it's just, it's just, you know, you, you, when it gets to chaos, the big key, Katie, is to not beat yourself up if somebody gets corn instead of apples. You can always fix anything by saying you're sorry and addressing it. Yeah. And I think too many people worry about perfection or like, if we deliver the wrong thing, it gets put on Facebook and everybody gets mad. It's, I'm sorry and meaning it is the greatest anecdote to anxiety around making a mistake in business and in life. Yeah, and I try to be super transparent. I'm like, listen, we went from just me, um, I had knee surgery on uh, February 11th, and then you know, Jeez. three days later, I was delivering things. I couldn't even put a shoe on yet, so that was cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right, well, people need food, so we're gonna get food out. Um, I'm impressed. And then, you know, then we just, we're, I'm like, 30x what I was January February. Have and you have you hired? Yes, that's my challenge. Um, people don't like to show up to work. I know sometimes that uh, a lot of times we we hired four people last week and only one showed up. And we like and Brandon, who my best friend, who has great EQ, hires well and like really like communicated well. Like I think what what it comes down to is not dwelling on that, recognizing that's going to be part of the game learning and hiring a couple more people than you need just in case they don't show up in first day or quit after day one. Both happen, yeah. no show and quit after day one. Um, but the reality is you just keep pushing. I think yeah. Facebook, Craigslist, LinkedIn are all good places to get you know individuals. I think emailing your all your customers and saying we're hiring, some of those yeah. people want to get their teenage kids out of the house. So yeah. there, I think there's some hacks there. Yeah, and I've done a little bit of uh, outsourcing too, so that I don't have to do everything in house. Good job. Um, and I simplified things because I was like, you know, it ends up I'm 
pretty much the primary delivery person and we're doing like Amazing. a big range and I love driving. That's fine. That's no big deal. Um, but I love, you know, the marketing end. like, that's, that's my jam. That's where I am. Um, you know, content and marketing and business development and customer relations. And, you know, we do handwritten thank you cards and the orders. Like that's, that's my thing. That's, what part um, of New York are you? I want to make sure anybody who's got friends and relatives in the area. I we are near nice Saratoga point. Springs. Saratoga Springs? Yes. And I what's your, from, yeah, where do you deliver through? What areas? Uh, Albany County, Saratoga County, Schenectady County, Rensselaer County, Washington County. I love it. Big shout out to my homie, homie, Joe Minakawa, Tokyo Joe, as we called him in college, from Schenectady, New York. I miss you yeah, a lot, absolutely. Joe, if you're watching. We deliver there right. on Mondays and Thursdays. Love it. So do, I, do you have a specific question maybe I can help with? What is the best way to scale? I don't need to scale huge. I just need to scale, you know, I'm at like 15, 20 deliveries. I can, with our current infrastructure, I can probably hit like 50. And I don't know. So you don't have demand for 50 yet? Oh, I do. I just can't. I don't. Infrastructure the, meaning the amount of food you make. You just, it's the delivery yes, food, part. Uh, cooler space, yep. like that type So you of mean the delivery infrastructure is not up to the level of being able to do 50? Mostly the people and the supply chain and that stuff. Is it a, uh, hi, is it a hiring? I think so. Yeah, I think so too. I think, I think you can't be disappointed when you hire two people and spend two weeks on it and they don't show up. Yeah. And so right now during this time especially, you need to hire anybody who's willing to say yes yep. and you need to take risks. Yeah. You know, Ricky might drive away with the food and eat at his house. That might happen. And then he'll call Susan. <laughs> or, they or they put it on the wrong porch. Or they put it on the wrong porch. Like you're going to have, I think it's okay to go there. Okay. I think it, because here's what people don't understand. But they don't eat it but they don't put it on the wrong porch. 90% of the time, it's okay. Yeah. And people think the 10% is the 100%. Mm -hmm. they, they fear. Yeah. And I don't, I, I'd rather say I'm sorry, and, and I believe in people, and I believe in the good, and I believe it's gonna be okay. Yeah. And I'm optimistic. Optimism is practical, it helps grow. Yeah. And so you just can't be scared. Start with friends and family. You know, start with, I would literally go into your phone from A to Z, Tonight, coffee, tea, wine, however you roll. A to Z from 6 p.m. to, to midnight and text mm -hmm. every person and say, hey, do you, do you know anybody who wants to work because I need yeah. four to five? Like, I mean all of them. I yeah. mean all, all I, of them. That's where I started and then no, no, no. Didn't show up. All so of that them. Cool. Okay. That happens. Yeah. But I don't think you, no, no, you hit up your closest friends. You didn't hit up somebody that you met six years ago and have their phone in your number in your address book. Yeah. That's what I would do. Okay. All right. Awesome. Good luck. It's just Thank hiring. You so much. Don't fear. Don't fear the no show, Katie. Don't okay. fear the wrong delivery, and I guarantee it will work out. Awesome. I mean Thank it. You so I'm much. positive. You're welcome. I Take appreciate care. it. People, people really fear hiring. I've seen this happen so much. Like, like we've made. I've made an ungodly amount of bad hires because I don't fear it. You can always fire that person. You can always say sorry. You can always lose one customer. But, but if you don't hire them, you're stuck at 15 and not 50. Simple. Let's keep moving it. Gary V, what's going on, man? What's good, Andrew? How you doing? This is awesome. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Really appreciate it. So uh, I got to give you a little bit of a backstory just so you can kind of get yeah, context. context on everything. So uh, five years ago, I started a, a social media marketing agency. Um, was super tough at first. Made it happen. Sold it within two years and then transfer over to e-commerce. Throughout this whole time, I've always wanted to really uh, do mentorship type stuff, speak. Uh, because of you, actually, I was always afraid of like creating content, putting myself out there for whatever reason. I don't know why, but I listened to you finally a month ago. And honestly, I think I found my calling. Like, this is awesome. I love every second of it. And I don't, it's, it's really cool within- Andrew, knowing that you did a social media shop and e-commerce and want to yeah. be a- entrepreneurial personal brand, the only vulnerability the guy like you has in the cliche scenario is don't fake the funk. Well, you already answered my question. Then. <laughs> but I, okay. I, you know, I knew you were, I knew where you were going based on your setup. Yeah. yeah. It's just, you're, you will win if you don't bullshit and too many guys like you bullshit because they can't wait to get to the fucking stage part and the verified part and the fame part, and that's yeah. awesome. There's nothing wrong with that. But make sure you you really talk about the truth of how good or not good your social media agency was. How good or not good you were at 
e-commerce because yeah. I see it every day. People can't wait to get to the kind of fame part and so they they kind of embellish or over-exaggerate how good yeah. of an entrepreneur they were and it fucking always, always, always bites them in the ass in the end. That makes sense. Well, let me, let me ask you this. So my main concern, and you're definitely, you're on the right track 100%, obviously. <laughs> but my main concern is when I was younger from 18 to like 23, 24, I had a heroin addiction. So I beat yeah, it, or I'm yeah, still at it every day. I've been proud sober. Yeah, I've been sober ever since. And it's powerful. The response I'm getting is, is cool, but I, I haven't gone public with it. And I don't know. Well, you just did. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I said in my question, I was like, by <laughs> this, if I'm going to do it, I might as well do it like this. Andrew, right? I'm so proud of you, bro. Thank you. I that's, appreciate you know how hard that is to achieve that double. Oh, I, I, well, that's that's part of the whole thing. I remember in the thick of it, I would be like, I remember a specific time where I was sitting on my couch when it was all happening. I thought I was never going to get out of it. I thought I was going to be like 75 years old and I was just going to be an addict, you know, or be in that space. And I feel like I could help a lot of people. You can. But I'm also afraid that it'll hurt my credibility. No, it will It will double up your credibility. Really? Yeah. yeah. It will double up your credibility. Yeah. Yeah, I just I just felt like it's a negative connotation. Look, it's uh, a it's a it 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 it's not it for whoever it's a negative comment. You know, whoever thinks it's a negative, yeah. is some is somebody you don't want in your community. It's somebody who doesn't understand it's a disease and who's casting judgment without fucking any knowledge of how the actual game is played. Yeah, you know what I mean, brother. Yeah, that's like, awesome. Thank like, you. Like 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 honestly, as a matter of fact, for example. In that story, in your truth, is exactly the reason why somebody would be more connected to you than connected to me. Because they're going through an alcohol addiction or opiate yeah. addiction. You know what I mean? And I can't give them that, but you can. Yeah. You know, like, 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 you know, that's why so many people aren't getting any traction. They're just talking vanilla. They're, yeah. like, they're watching my Absolutely. shit and regurgitating it. Absolutely. It's not it's their truth. Commerce right now, a hundred percent. A hundred percent, absolutely. It's your biggest strength, bro. It's That's the awesome. it's the biggest it's the biggest thing you got. Uh, n- not to mention, I believe, and this is coming out of pure love, out of my heart for you specifically. I also think that it's if you make it a pillar you stand on, that it gives you a better chance to f- fight it off for the rest of your life. Because what people don't know, and what you do know, is this a yeah. forever is a forever game. And a lot of people win that forever game. It seems daunting in their 20s. You know, yeah. I, met, I met a lot of people who've had real addiction issues in their 40s. And the thing they keep telling me is that in your 20s after you're in 30s, after you've gotten through it, you know, and you've been in it and you're in year one or two and three, then it starts and you're happy, but then you're just like, fuck, I gotta fight this for 60 more years. And it sometimes feels daunting. Yeah. And, and kind of getting out of the shadows and letting everybody know about it has actually given them energy to then go that 20 years instead of relapsing two years later yeah yeah that makes sense that makes perfect sense that's awesome man brother it is your strength yeah like 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 if you, like no, no ready for this bro in 2009 people literally told me and and people told me to my face and told my agents that they would not book me to speak because i cursed mm. but i just stuck to my truth well there you know do i think the you know, dare, you know, do I think like the most conservative, like actually dare, but like, do I think the most conservative company won't hire you because of that? Sure. If they've demonized drugs and right. some sort of, you know, but do I think three other companies will? Yes. Yeah. Like, don't, don't worry about it as a stigma when it's your strength. Most people think their stigma, most people have feel a stigma. I was raped, I had an opium addiction, I, I went to jail, I, I, I you, know, you know, theft, cyber, like, you know, security breaches that put me in like probation. Like most people think that their stigma, especially when it's not, you know, as long as you don't murder someone, rape someone, as long as it doesn't yeah. get into the top five to seven things in culture. You can't come back from it. Yeah. That's right, our society is wildly forgiving and, it, and it's actually your strength but most people think it's their demon and it's not, it's their strength. You know, that makes sense. And it, it makes perfect sense. Some kid, I, I, some kid that we hired said to me, Gary, 
I just feel like I can say this to you and work for us for a little while. He's like, I went to jail, but you guys don't know about it. And I was like, so? Yeah. And then I was like, for what? And then he told me it was not that bad. I was like, good, okay. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, like. No, that, that makes perfect sense. It's just lean into it. And I honestly, I, I thought of that too. I, I just didn't know if it would, if it would, the positives would outweigh the negatives. And I remember there were times where I feel like still to this day, if I watched a video of somebody like me now, back then, I probably would have gotten sober a couple of years earlier. Or it would have helped me in one way or another, you know? I just, yep. yeah. Yep. Bro, shadows are heavy. Yeah. Shadows, secrets slow you down. But yeah. do you understand that, forget about, of course the positives are gonna outweigh the negatives. You're not gonna have to think. Yeah, it's what absolutely. Are you, what are you gonna do when you're on, what, what were you doing when you were thinking about this and laying there and saying, okay, one day I'm gonna be like Gary Vee and I'm gonna be on stage, I'm doing Q&A. And somebody's like, yo dude, didn't you have a heroin dip? You're like, I fucking, my brother knows you. Like what were yeah. you gonna do? What were you gonna do in that moment? <laughs> you can't have that moment. No, absolutely. You, know, uh, you would, you would have, you would have sabotaged your own upside because yeah. you would have feared the exposing moment. People need to put out their stigmas to the world because their secret is sabotaging their upside because they have to overthink every move because they haven't exposed their stigma. Absolutely, yeah. It's good that I, I do it now before it ever gets to any any point like that. And even then, you should be like, "And fuck you." Yeah. Bro, everybody's got shit. Yeah. And you're a hero to break through it, not the other way around. Shit, man. It's a disease, bro. You're not bad. This isn't 1984 anymore. Yeah. Nancy Reagan out, isn't out here shaming us. Come on. <laughs> Let's get our shit together, man. This is a disease. I'm proud of you. You fucking accomplished more in breaking that habit than 90 fucking percent of people will do in their life. I believe that to be yeah. true, Andrew. Dude, I really appreciate that. That's super awesome, man. I really do. Thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity, man. You got it. This was tough. Soon. So I really, this is awesome. Honestly, thank you. You're welcome. Talk to you soon. Let's keep it moving. <clears throat> hey, Kevin. Hey, what's up? <laughs> what's up with Good you? Good morning. Good morning. morning. I'm super excited to be here. I think, am I like super, whoa, whoa yeah. Wait, is that better? Do I look okay? They they both look great, Kendall. Don't worry. Go. All right. I got a light and everything. I'm like feeling really professional right now. <laughs> um, I don't. Anyway. I look like like everyone's like, get a light. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. So. <laughs> yeah. And that's what I thought when I put the light on. I was like, oh, okay, he doesn't fucking care. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's literally what I thought. But I'm super excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Um, uh, they've been trying to get me on this week. But you know what's crazy is like this whole week, I have been waking up thinking I'm going to be on at like, I get up at like 5 a.m. because I'm in California and it's really changed because then Tuesday and Thursday I did the same thing. And I was like, dude, I'm, I'm fucking down for this. I'm ready. So I, I'm I kind of, Oh, changed so, the so you got it. So you're in Cali. You, they, like, obviously I only get to so many, they have to prep for who, how many I get yes. to. So you, you started Monday. Like you thought you might be on yeah. Monday if we got to it. So Monday. And so you had to get up super early. And then because you did it all week, you were waking up what time before? Like 9 a.m., 8 a.m., like that kind of thing? Yeah, I was like staying up till 2, waking up at 9. That's, and now you're on this. So are you going to sleep yeah. a little bit earlier? Yeah, I'm going to sleep a little bit earlier. And, um, do, you, and do you like this vibe better? Dude, I love it. I love it. I, I, awesome. I, I'm cool. a professional athlete, so I've been waking up super early my entire life. Um, but now with like coronavirus, how things sure. have like kind of changed, I was just telling my mom earlier, like uh, – the difference between wake going to sleep at two and waking up at like nine or 10 and doing the opposite where I wake up at six and you know, whatever, like the hours are the same, but what I get done from 10 PM to 2 AM is so different from 6 AM to 10 AM. So it's been fucking awesome. So thank you guys just for that. You know, what's funny. You know, what's funny is I've always had one of the biggest reasons I always knew I could never live in LA is because the world navigates around New York. That's just the truth. Yeah. And like the thought of waking up at like, 8 a.m. but it's 11 a.m. in New York and the world's been moving gives me anxiety. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, like even yeah. when I'm on the West Coast on business, I wake up at like six because and mm -hmm. even that's like, ugh, like it's kind of funny. Yeah, no, no, I feel it. Um, anyway, so so I'm super excited to be here and I just to preface my question, do you know what what jiu-jitsu is? Brazilian jiu-jitsu? I do. Okay, okay, I thought so. Big shout out to Lou Levy, 
I'm one of my good buddies who's super about it. Go ahead. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. So, um, so I'm a black belt. I'm a seven time world champion. I've been training since I was a little kid. Um, and I, my main question is cause I like you and everybody else in the world have a lot of spinning plates. So I'm a professional athlete. Um, my parents own a bunch of, or three jiu-jitsu academies that I work at full time and kind of like you, I, work with with the wine I, or the liquor store i work at them full time my salary stays the same but my goal is to grow the business and then reinvest the the profits and it's been growing like crazy the last few years when i got back from one one year of attempted college um <laughs> so it's been it's been great and also i wrestled i was an international wrestler for team usa and now um I'm, i was really touched by uh, was it andrew that was just on i was super touched by him um, cause I'm about to hit my four year anniversary of being recovered from bulimia, um, which has been a huge, interesting thing in combat sports with making weight. And that's a whole nother topic. Um, and then also I'm, I'm super fucking passionate about real estate and I have all this stuff going on. Right. So I have like, um, a small following on Instagram, like around 18 or 19,000, um, most of it fans of my sport, TikTok. I have like a thousand, it's super small. And, um, my question, how many you, times have you posted on TikTok? So good question. I posted about 20 times and only in the last week have I really gone up to like two, three times a day. Um, and I'm trying to stay consistent because the only TikTok I've ever had go viral is of my dog. And <laughs> <laughs> my dog's super fucking cute, but it has nothing to do <laughs> with me. So, but um, you know what, but you know what yeah. people, people, this is something that people get confused on. I think you milk the, what's the dog's name? Bella. I think you milk Bella for like a couple months yeah. and then you slide in the jujitsu stuff. I mean that. Like okay. look, I you know like I really believe in that. Like I, I think people are like, "Oh, but Gary says don't post like don't just do it for the likes." On the flip side, you know, there's a lot of fun stuff you can do with Bella and Bella's part of your life. Bulimia is part of your life. Jujitsu is part of your life. Real estate's part of your life. I think you can mix it all. Too many people try to make their content too narrow. Okay. So so with the content and I, and I'm kind of like, like you're saying, I'm doing like body positivity stuff. I'm doing jujitsu stuff. I'm just kind of like my, my boyfriend's super nerdy and obsessed with Star Wars. So I'm starting to like put that in there. <laughs> I've, dude, I convinced him to start going on TikTok and he's like the least social media person ever. I was like, there's a place for you. Gary V said, there's a place for you. So that's another thing. But my And, <laughs> and by the way, you two as a combo is a fucking yeah. viral hit. Like the nerdy Star Wars dude <laughs> with the black, Belt fucking badass chick. Like he's a black belt too. Oh fuck. Okay. Good thing I didn't call him nerdy Star Wars dude <laughs> to his face. Go ahead. But um, okay, cool. So so I got the con. I'm gonna keep doing that. And that's actually I put a video of him on my TikTok for the first time yesterday about doing a self-defense thing. So I'm pumped about that. Love. Um so so my question is for jujitsu and wrestling, because our sport is hard as fuck, but it does not make a lot of money. There's no NBA. There's no MLB. Um, there are some sponsors. Like, like for me, like mm -hmm. the fights are weird. Like in a few weeks, I have a fight where I have like two thousand to win, two thousand to show, or two thousand to show, two thousand to win. Then I have something that I pay to fly there, and like there's no payment. Then I have something that's five hundred. So it's super all over the place. And I have a sp I have some sponsors, but it's not that much. It's like very. I, I make way more from like working at the school. Yep. So how? What is your I really want to see if there's a way, like I, I fuck with Ashley Graham. You, do you know, I'm sh okay. She's, she's like amazing. I want to see if there's a way that I can get into that world, bringing more eyes. I can, I can save you time. Yes. The answer is yes. Your charisma and energy is so strong. You, you like have it. <laughs> okay. You, you, you just need to go completely ape shit, obsessive, which you're capable of, you know, given what you've achieved in your life. Right. On being a content machine. Okay. You just can, you're exactly the kind of girl that needs to be putting out 25 to 40 pieces of content a day. Okay. You need I to, started tweeting you need, people. You need to, exactly. You go to Twitter and you search every jujitsu terminology and the term and you reply yeah. to everybody. One more time for the kids in the back who, <laughs> who don't know how Gary V was created in 2006. From 2006 to 2011, for five years, I replied to every single person that tweeted at me. And I, at first, when nobody knew who I was, I jumped into every word that was mentioned on Twitter about wine and mm -hmm. joined the conversation. And I put out a daily wine video every single day. Okay. Kendall, you have so much charisma and like great energy and cute and interesting and have believe, like you have everything yeah. going for you. Okay. 
So just more content. I, I like even the way you talk, I fuck with hey, like you've got it. <laughs> okay. Yay. I'm excited to do that. I got, I got Instagram going. I got Twitter. I got, um, TikTok. I have like 50 followers on Twitter. So I'm writing everyone that has jujitsu in their thing. So I, cause I don't give a fuck. And is then, this, is um, this, is this your handle across the board? It is. It's so Kendall Rusing is obvi obviously my name. My last name is re it, it's Rusing, but it looks like reusing. I don't, I wanted to make everything <laughs> Kendall Marie. So it's easy. <laughs> <laughs> no, Kendall. No. Kendall, this is back to Andrew. Like people, people think that like you're seeing it as like, oh no, it's reusing. Kendall <laughs> reusing is the fucking funniest. That's exactly right. <laughs> okay. I'm telling you. Like, like, okay. like, like, I'm telling you. Like, you do you know how right. bad a user handle named Gary V with two silent E's are? Yo, you gotta check out Gary V. They go in, Gary V. And they're like, where is this fucker? In the beginning, it was like, oh, like, like it's just like, it. you will make a name. A name I will see. be made. You understand? Okay. So I, Kendall, reusing is fine. <laughs> I would even, if I were you, I'd be like, and this is Kendall reusing, just getting, re like it's a thing. I see, I see, I see. Like, okay, like, that was, like, I, like, I, a, like I a secondhand it. shop. Like your biggest sponsor should be, could be Goodwill because people reuse, pro like, like, <laughs> I'm telling you, pe that would be dope. it's the same way as like a scar. Like, like every everybody thinks their scarlet letter is their uh -huh. shortcoming. It's their strength. Okay. Okay. I I see. I see. I'm um, I'm down with it. I'm down. So everything is every. Well, people learn to spell it. It's not like whatever. What do you mean learn to spell it? Everybody knows how to <laughs> respell reusing. Like everybody like. I wouldn't know, how, what's your last name again? I apologize. It's Rusing. Right, I wouldn't know how to spell Rusing. I'd be like R-O-O-S-I-N. Like, like, but <laughs> reuse, like, no. Reusing is your strength. Okay. Okay, and last thing, how much content do you consume to stay on trend but not to get sucked into the black hole? Because TikTok is a black hole sometimes for me. When you're consuming it for strategy, unlimited. When you're consuming it for escapism because you're bored, or you're using it for you know leisure because you're not happy with what you're doing, zero. Uh -huh. I consume okay. zero social media for entertainment. I use okay. this for entertainment and then that's about it. I use it for strategy and learnings. Like the black hole is when you're using it because you're not fired up about what you're doing in your life. Right. Or you just need a break. I don't want to demonize an hour yeah, of yeah. just going in the feed. Do you, but, but, right. but well, like it, it's very simple. It comes okay. completely down to are you doing this because you're actually studying? Like I'm in feed studying. Right, okay. Like, like I'm not like, oh, that's funny. I'm like, why did yeah. you do that? What's that hashtag? How many seconds was that? What did it like, do, do, read the comments, read the comments, read the, why do they love Meg and Sally? But you know what? Yeah, okay, okay. And then, okay, last thing, I know I'm gonna get you to the next person because I'm now that person that's cutting people off that are in line. I love um, it. Ashley Graham, like just that whole world, there's some other people that I follow as well. How do I, like, how do I, other than, co like, I know I'm creating content, how do I burst into that world coming from an athlete in a sport that's not mainstream? Patience. Like, okay. One single picture where you're, you know, when you're looking, your honest, your true self, but your copy is powerful, clicks the attention of one person and you're on the Today Show. Okay. I see, just keep doing that and get in front of as many eyes. It's fucking reps. How, yeah. how do I become a black belt? Rex. Rex. <laughs> By coming to class every day, whether you feel like it or not. <laughs> got it? Okay, I got so it. So I, lo I love, to, like, I think we had somebody else during this two months who was black belt. I said, how'd you get A karate there? guy. Right. Kendall, right? How'd you do it? Like, that's why I'm a black belt in what I do. Like, right. you've got to put in the fucking work. Okay. It's the work. It. And that's why I work so much on mindset just like in your world, it's fucking mindset. If you're insecure of how you look or what people are gonna say or that you only have 13 followers but your buddy has 400 or whatever yeah. the fuck it is, when you said I have a small audience on Instagram and threw out some for 19th, whatever number you threw out, everybody gasped because they have 310. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and so it's like comparing, it's like I, I get into this whole Stop. thing where like- Stop, right there. Where I don't wanna give a fuck. No, and no, 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 give a comparing. Fuck. That fu if I could fucking take that word and beat the living fucking shit out of it, if I could take <laughs> if I could take comparing and fucking choke hold the fuck out of it, like yeah. you know how? Yeah. That fucking word, I fucking hate that word. Mm. And I don't people follow me, I don't use hate often. Yeah. I hate that word. You went right to where I wanted you to.
right there. Compare uh, uh, that, that, uh, that, that. I fucking hate that word. Me too, but I don't, it's hard. <laughs> but, but I'm telling you, you have to fucking fight. Everything's hard. Yeah. And like that, my ability to not compare is a core foundational strength. I, I, not only do I not compare, when I see other businessmen and women do things that I haven't accomplished yet, I applaud right. if they've done it the right way. Right. I think it's so fucking awesome to watch people accomplish things. I just wonder if because I'm not getting the same response in my Yo, content, if hold it's on not second. good enough hold to on. get. Dustin, throw up Whitaker is my dad's comment. I want to address this because it's super fun for me. Like, it's a super fun comment for me. I'm sorry, Kendall, I just want to jump no, in. because Because it's one of my favorite subject matters. Dustin, I don't know if you see it. Whitaker's my dad. Uh, yellow emoji on Twitch. Um, like, it's one of my favorite comments about my energy that I think a lot about. Um, Dustin, you sleeping or you can't find it? I'm, tr- I'm trying to find <laughs> it. <laughs> it's in between Barry Eisenbaum and, and Ramon. Izian, David Abreu's near there, Judith Sellis. It was at 9.45 p.m. Whitaker is my dad. Um, Kendall, you got this. Like, like compare, you know? So I, so I, I compare, like, when, I'm, when I, I, I applaud people for doing what I haven't done yet, and I think it's fucking awesome, and, and that's amazing. But I worry that because I'm not getting the same response on my content, that means I'm not doing what it needs to take to get to that level, if that makes sense. That's super smart. The problem is you haven't done enough shit. Okay. It's the same reason people are mad that they don't have an orange belt and they want to give up. Right. You're literally doing the thing you understand the best. Okay. Just do more. More and more and more. All you don't have rest. you don't have context yet. Okay. You haven't been doing it long enough. Okay. Got it? I got you. Love Thank it. you. Thank you what, so much. You're welcome. Okay. What occurs my dad? <laughs> What's super interesting is how many people think that who confuse optimism and happiness and and you know just genuine gratitude with in enha- performance enhancement drugs like like if i took an advil i go to sleep because of how little medicine and drugs like my fam- like the demonization in the eastern european ha- family and especially by my mom who was super affected by nancy reagan no drugs no alcohol like it's so fun to me that that is like i'm always th- wondering like who writes that comment? What are, they, are, do they do that at all? Like, do they, are they so low? They must be so not optimistic that they couldn't imagine being happy, which drives the energy. It makes me really compassionate and empathetic. Whitaker, if you want to be on the show, let Dustin know. It, I really think about this shit when people write it because I'm pumped, I don't know. Anyway, let's keep it going. It's so obvious to me that happiness has the most energy. Like, there is no artificial drug that beats gratitude. It just doesn't exist. All right, let's keep it going. How was that drink, bro? That's good. Some water, you know what I'm saying? Hydrated. Nav, it's so good to see you, bro. I'm so I'm so proud of you. I've been so enjoying you, you navigate. You know I've been on you for a minute, just cheering you along from the sidelines, bro. You're, you're doing it out here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's it, yeah. You are, man. I'm really proud of you. Thank you, man. I appreciate it, man. What's been good? Um, nothing. I just dropped a project. Uh, I know. Did it, I just is doing really well, you know. Um, I put all my, you know, energy, my whole being into this, like every day. Um, thinking about it all day, thinking about getting better. Like I drove myself nuts, just always being like, "Oh, in the studio, I'm not getting better. I'm not getting better. I'm not getting better." And I just drove me to just keep getting better. And I, I'm just here now, and I'm just like, shit. Like the whole last year and like, like a quarter has just been worth it. I don't know. It's kind of crazy. It's like running through the finish line in a marathon. Bro, you haven't even started. You have too much talent in your <laughs> no. body. Bro, you haven't even started. I don't give a fuck how great this project goes, bro. You haven't even fucking started. Yeah. You're a fucking youngster. Yeah. You've got stories and soul. Facts. You really have it, bro. Yeah, facts. Appreciate you know, back to what I was saying earlier to Kendall, like, I watch. You know I watch. I, Boyd puts me onto so much stuff. I watch myself and, like, that. you know, like, I just know where you're at. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> Anything on your mind? Anything I can help you with? What's your um, TikTok? What's your TikTok strategy for this for this project? Because, bro, I'm telling you, to be in music and not have a crazy TikTok strategy for everything you do, it's a huge fucking mistake. And I'm feeling your energy, and I'm really glad you came on the show because I need a much bigger fucking strategy, bro. 
Um, well, that, that's my that's what that would lead into my question for you. Um, I have prepared is, um, during this time where we can't do like, you know, shows and promo and stuff like that, like going and doing pop ups or whatever. Like, what would be your strategy to promote your app an album during this time? Lives, content, lives, content. But I'm telling you, even if the whole world was wide open, the number one piece of advice I would tell an artist is to win TikTok. TikTok, okay. TikTok, bro. I would DM, literally DM, all 100, 500 top TikTok stars and be like, yo, here's my project. Tell me if you fuck with it. And if you want to do a little collab piece of content, let's go. And one of those little fuckers makes a dance and it's fucking over. Smart, smart. You know, you know what's sad to say? I don't even have a TikTok account. <laughs> now, what the fuck, bro? <laughs> Yeah, I know it's it's bad. I know. No, no, it's super bad. Yeah. Like like unacceptable. Yeah. Bro, it's unacceptable. You just said to me like I don't breathe oxygen. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. I feel you. I I'm so. That. You know why I'm so excited right now? Because I've been waiting for my name drop in one of your fucking songs anyway. So now. You're, now I'm thinking like, oh, he's gonna say, Gary, do you put me on that talk? Then I went to the block. Like, like, I'm already trying to think yeah, about yeah, what the yeah, fuck you're gonna you, say. You. I'm, Bro, I'm giving you credit. <laughs> I, li- listen to me. You need to go hard on it. Yo, hit hit up the crew. Let, let, let's get on a Zoom this weekend or let's get on a Zoom Monday because I'm, t- I'm gonna kind of try to defrag this weekend. But like, I will help you. I really, really, really think. You have to understand, the culture and the youngsters love you. You go in there and really do it right, you're on the verge, bro. You're on the verge of some crazy ass shit. And you know, you know how much time I spent with Gunna and Keed and like the baby. Like, I'm telling you, listen to me. Yeah. You have to go, ha- you need to download it. I just said it earlier. You need to download it, 10 hours of consuming it. Just watch it fucking what's going on there. And then 10 pieces of content. Bro, you're this close. You get one thing lit off on fucking on TikTok right now during this project and you go to a completely different level. Completely different level, bro. Shit, I got I got to adjust to the times, man. You have to. Right? Remember when you were coming up and the fucking winners and old cats didn't understand SoundCloud, didn't understand the gram. Facts. You're too young to be old. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> I like that. I'm definitely I'm definitely gonna pursue that TikTok thing, man. Now. Yeah. I'm gonna hit you up like Sunday night and be like, yo, what the fuck? Yeah. I need right, to see progress. Less, Bet. All right, I love you. Less. Talk to you. My boy, I appreciate it, man. That's a superstar. That's a superstar. You'll see. Mom, that, that, that man right there might be playing in uh Xander's bar mitzvah. Cause he's gonna beg for it. Hey, Sydney. Hi, Gary. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm well. Good. Um, I'm coming at from Barrie, Ontario, Canada. <laughs> um, first off, I just obviously want to thank you for having me on the show, and I'd like to commend Kendall um, and Andrew for talking about their struggles, cause I know how hard that can be, and especially on a platform like this, um, it can be like really intimidating. Very daunting. So I have a two-part question for you, um, and then just a bit of context first. So I'm 22 years old. I am a month away from graduating at Western University um, for kinesiology, which is, it's like the movement of the body. um, Yeah, like what it undergoes during exercise and everything. So when I was first starting high school, um, I was really athletic growing up. Uh, I actually developed an eating disorder. And it was with me for seven years. Um, Sorry to hear that. It's okay, thank you. Uh, I'm actually two weeks away from being discharged from my recovery program. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Um, So the issue with this is when I was in like the peak of my eating disorder, um, I jumped with the opportunity to take kinesiology because it was so focused towards the body and I was all wrapped up in fitness and everything. Um, and now that my mind is clearer and I know I should not be tormenting my body in that way, um, I don't think this is a career for me, so. Great, great news, Sid. You're young <laughs> as fuck. I know. This, yeah. is, a, this is amazing. Mm-hmm. Do you understand how big of a win this is for you? Do you know how many people work for 30 years in something they hate? and then like retire and then just like mope through life. This is yeah. a huge, this is like the best. 
Mm -hmm. I I know, and it's frustrating because it should be. It. It's I love the time, and now you're, you're, you're gonna love you're gonna love other things. Yeah. What are you gonna just love that? No. You're fucking twenty two. You're gonna love everything. Yeah. So I was just gonna ask you, um, do you have any insight as to what my next steps could look like? Possibly? Yep. Okay. You need to you need to literally explore every random thought in your mind around mm -hmm. cooking and skiing and and making bread and being a wine expert and being a, a, a video game expert and hair and mm -hmm. like your next step needs to be exploring just like everyone's next step should be. Right. Like yeah. literally anything that grabs your curiosity you need to watch YouTube videos, you need to try, you need to order a kit, you need to find a friend, you need to talk to people on Twitter about it, you need to join a Facebook group about it, you need to follow 10 people about it. Like, yeah. you need to go explore. Mm -hmm. And that's like, I do that too. I'm. It's funny, my parents make fun of me for it, but I know you've said it like all it's along. It's your strength. But you say like you're allowed to change your mind. And I, my problem is like, once I find something, I'm like in love with it. And then I, it just kind of like, you're not in love with it. You're in crush with it. And then you figure out that you're not in love with it. I watched that. But when, you, but when you find what you're in love with, that crush will go to love. Right. You're not in love with it. Mm -hmm. You're in crush with it. You have a crush on it. Yeah. Ooh, baking, I crush you. But then three weeks later, you're like, fuck this powder. Sh you know, this, I don't like this flower shit. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't want to wait for the pumpkin pie to come out. Next. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ooh, skiing, you're cute. Oh, I don't like tearing my meniscus. Like next, like, like you're in crush with it. Right. That's yeah. good. Thank you. Okay. You're that, welcome. I knew you're just so smart. Like I knew you were gonna like bring me down and help me out, so. Let, let, me, let me keep building here and give you a little more. Mm -hmm. You're 22. You don't need to figure out what you're gonna do with your life ever, let alone in the next five years. Mm -hmm. You need to focus on being happy. Right, and that's like, that's funny, that's actually a good segue into my like second part of my question. Um, so it's crazy like um, eating disorders and like I'm sure Kendall probably knows what I'm talking about when I say this, like it's just like this cloud that comes over your brain and like you block out the world. Like I had tunnel vision, I, um, like all I did in high school was go to school. Then I'd have like football practice. I'd come home, I'd work out and then I'd do homework and go to bed. And I only let myself eat a certain amount of calories. And so obviously that's going to have an effect on your brain. Um, and I missed out on so much of my life, like my teenage years and I can't get them back. And Me too. Guess yeah. who else missed out on them? And? Let's focus on your next 100 years and not dwell on your last six. Exactly, so with that, when I was stuck in the eating disorder, um, obviously, like I said, I didn't, like, I didn't really know differently. Like I thought that's what I wanted and everything. So now that I'm recovering and I see that there's so much outside of this, I don't want anyone else to go through what I did because it's so put up. So keep doing what you're doing right now. So how do I actually change their perspective and make an impact on them by telling my story? By telling your story. Let me ask you a question, Sid. Okay. If I told you when you were 99 and we were and you came to heaven, I was like, yo, Sid, remember tea with Gary V? Yeah. You're like, hey Gary, how have you been? <laughs> I'm like, good. I would say, hey, remember when we talked in 2020 and you asked that question, I said just make, and you made a bunch of Instagrams and TikToks and YouTubes, but then after six months you stopped because it wasn't getting traction, and you went on, and thank God, it was so great, you listened to me, and you became the greatest skiing instructor of all time, and da 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 Well, I don't know if you know this, but this is what's cool about heaven. Let me show you the woman who you impacted. She was one girl in, you know, in Peru, in Winnipeg, in the south side of Chicago, who did watch, you know, your 87 views on this, on this one YouTube video in 2021, 87 people watched it. But here's Karen, the one person who watched it, who you actually, had she not seen that video, here's what heaven's about, this is what her life would have been, dead at 31, because she destroyed her body, 
But because of your video that only got 87 views, here was her life. Grandma, happy life. Wouldn't it be worth it? Yeah, and... So, stick with me. Okay. So then make the video. You don't need to be 8 million on Instagram. You don't need to be fucking Dr. Phil or Oprah. Mm -hmm. Just make the fucking video. One person. One person. One person. I've, I literally, I've been in that mindset the whole time, Sid. Now mm -hmm. it's more than one person, but I'm still in the one person game. Right. And I love that. I love like how, I know you aren't a huge fan of compliments, but I love how humble you are about it. And you know, I've been doing that. I do have a TikTok. I've been posting like minimum four times a day and I'm not doing it for the followers. Like honestly, I could care less about that. I just want, I don't know how to actually get it to the people who I'm trying to um, They'll find you. connect it to. They'll find you. Put mm -hmm. hashtag, you know, put six hashtags in your TikTok and Instagram and they'll find you. Mm -hmm. If you don't think there's little girls left and right putting hashtag eating disorder, clicking hashtag eating disorder, hashtag bulimia, like if you don't think that's happening, you're out of your mind. Put the hashtags in there. Make yeah. the content. They'll find you. Okay. Somebody's gonna find your TikTok in 19 years and it's gonna mm -hmm. help her. Tell the truth, one person. Tell the truth, one person. Mm -hmm. They'll find you. People are worried about getting bigger. Mm -hmm. Focus on putting out the message. That's what I want. Like I want to even obviously start with one person, but like I'm a dreamer and in my dream, like I'd love to like speak in front of a- I understand. And help them and I understand. Mm -hmm. But that means you're worried about you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Worry about them. Yeah. And I, I want that too. Like I have Everybody, friends in my said, program and I love them. Said so many people roll up to me and like, Gary, I want to be like you. I want to give. And then you listen to the next 13 things out of their mouth and they're saying, I want to make $100,000 speaking and drive in private jets and have fun. Like mm -hmm. they're not about that giving life. Mm -hmm. If you want to help them, then help them. Yeah, Making like the videos they, is helping them. They'll find you. Of course you want to speak in all this. I get that. And maybe you're good enough and maybe you're not and that's okay. But one more time with the heaven story. Wouldn't it be worth it? And just like you figured out something else wasn't in the cards for you, you may find out that you speaking on public stages about this is not in the cards for you either. And that will be amazing. Or maybe it will be. But you're never going to figure it out if you're not completely in a selfless mind state of producing content on all the platforms People don't produce on all the platforms because like I have no Twitter followers. So they don't mm -hmm. want to have three Twitter followers because they're not worried about the audience, they're worried about themselves. They don't want to waste their time. Right. They, they don't like the, how it feels to have no audience. Mm -hmm. So then if like, I know I want to, like I want to make those videos, make an impact even on that one person, but what do I do if that one person doesn't want to hear it? Like they, like they just don't believe me. You didn't believe anybody either back then. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Sweetheart, most of the people don't believe the shit that's coming out of my mouth. They say they believe it, but they don't act on it, which means they don't believe it. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, the student always finds the teacher, right? There's that saying, right? The student finds it, some, some shit like that, right? Yeah. Listen to me. They will find it. There are people who've been following. Watch this in the comments. I don't know what you're watching on, but I'm going to watch it. There are people who've listened to me for four years, and then it was one time, one video. They were ready. I broke them down. They mm -hmm. broke themselves down. Mm -hmm. you, know, if, you know, if they don't want to hear it, there's nothing me and you are going to do about it. Yeah. More importantly, go back to what I said. The one person. If everybody here who wants the fucking fame and the action focused on just one person in their life, which would be so worth it by human mm -hmm. standards, it's fucking huge. It's fucking, what's the matter with people? Impacting one person and making their life better is all time. Why do you think, like it's all time. Yeah. Somebody will be ready to hear you. Okay. But if you start putting out for the purpose of helping one person versus how do I get more followers, your mm -hmm. content will be different. And yeah. When your content is different, they'll start working. Yeah. And is, I'm so sorry, I know you have people. Um, is like I've been coming out on TikTok, um, like just like speaking to the camera, talking about like, Good experiences, but I've seen some other people doing like 
what they eat in a day. And I just don't know if that's the best idea because that can Is, be like- Do you it. want to do that? Not really. <laughs> so don't do, fucking do it. Just because they have 8,000 followers or 8 million followers because they do that, that works for them. You do you. Yeah. Pick a nice little song in the background so they find you through a trending song. Use the hashtags mm -hmm. and fucking stay consistent. Okay. One person. Wow. You don't need to figure out your life in the next 10 years. I don't give a fuck what your parents say. <laughs> okay. Okay? Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Gary. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Oof, good show. I'm even late for my next meeting. Dustin, this was one of the best shows, Dust. They were like bangers. This was like a great album. Yeah, and you had you a, good, a lot of good quotes too. Yeah, there's a ton of shit. I'm gonna be so pissed at the team if we don't have at least six fucking Instagrams out of this. There's some like bangers here. Yeah. This was as good of a show. Like it was consistently like high quality, like good vibes. I was in a good zone. Like this is one of the better shows. It's the Abel Franco. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, the Abel Franco part definitely started me off right, you know. And running up those fucking hills this morning, I, I really think that it was a good one. Like, I feel like this was one of the better shows. Sign up for Wine Text. Check out AllInChallenge.com. Pass on the show to others, please. If you if you do anything, take the URL you just had, watch us on and share it in your social. Um, I love you guys. See ya. Oh, I like that. Nice Wine Text. Thanks, Mom. Love you. Um, see you guys. And the people that are going to win over the next five to seven years are going to be very comfortable in controlled fucking chaos. You don't love the process. This is dreams we're talking about. Dreams require sacrifice. All of your actions have to then map to it. Backpack, backpack, backpack. Nobody gives a shit about where you grew up. The whole game is scaling the unscalable. It's fucking hard work, it's being respectful, it's being a good person. Do that, that's just a good idea. It's there, the flip game's there. This house right here, there's $400 to me. I stay in my lane, like real fucking tight. But you can't be crippled. Everybody here is judging themselves. You're looking at what's in front of you right now. You're losing because you're laying in your bed looking at somebody's fucking glamorous photoshopped picture of them doing something cool and you're envious and you're jealous and you're impatient and it's crippling your upside. Let me just say it one more time if you're confused what I just said. I say put your fucking flag on the ground of who the fuck you are. Whoever provides the most value always wins. You're entering the greatest five year window of your life. My only answer to me or anybody like is just like just try shit. Shut your business down and go work for an apparel company for two years. Nobody you've ever met got there without the hard work. So you better get your speed up. You better work harder. You better work smarter. If you can't Google stuff, you're not gonna be able to do anything that I'm telling you to do. Gary GTV, my new account. Check me out. Hope you enjoy it. <laughs>